and perspective on the protests and where we go from here. I'm joined by Reverend Cornell Brooks. He's the former head of the NAACP and is now a professor at the Harvard Kennedy School, where he runs a civil rights clinic. Thanks, Reverend, for being with us. H how do you think the U.S. has changed in this la last week of protests? Mm. Uh, the U.S. has in... Uh America is in a state of mourning and grief, coming to grips with not just George Floyd's death as monumental, emotionally and morally as that is, but to coming to, coming to grips with the circumstances, the forces that brought him to his grave, namely this pandemic of police brutality. So we are reeling and roiling between grief and the recognition that this is a senseless tragedy that did not have to happen. Namely, uh, George Floyd is uh, that one in 1,000 African-American men who can expect to die at the hands of the police. Those are, those are the facts. That's what we're trying to come to grips with. And so we find ourselves literally in the midst of a uh, global uh, movement for the preservation of black lives, for the prevention of the otherization of black lives, and a movement to bring about an end to policing uh, as we know it. But why do you think this event was the tipping point? I mean, we've had such tragic yeah. incidents involving innocent black men and sometimes children gunned That's down right. by police. I mean, I'm thinking of Tamir Rice in 2014, right. a 12-year-old boy with a toy gun. Why right. was this one the tipping point event? It's, it's, it's an excellent question. So the difference comes down to the video. And what I mean by that is we've had hashtag after hashtag, a loss and stolen humanity, tragedy after tragedy over the course of years. Tamir Rice, uh, Trayvon uh, Martin, uh, Walter Scott, Philando Castile. And in my role as president and CEO of the NAACP, yeah. I saw the over and over again. But in this instance, we have a video that takes place in emotional slow motion over the course of the better part of nine yeah. minutes. Pornographically violent. It is a visceral close-up. So mm -hmm. people brought into uh, an instance of police brutality. And it is, if you will, that video is a crash course, an executive education course, a remedial course in police brutality. And after yeah. watching it, serially, Americans were shocked, as are people around the world, and they want to act. They want to bring about an end to this kind of policing. Are you sensing a change in white attitudes here in America uh, as a result of this movement, this latest protest movement? A absolutely. So when you look at the uh, crowds uh, and the demonstrators, the protesters, what you find over and over again is that those who are attending these rallies, protests, and demonstrations are multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multi-gender, representing the mm -hmm. scope and of our humanity. And you find, you're finding that people understand that when you say Black Lives Matter, what you are actually affirming is that our collective, our collective humanity matters. And so there's a shift, mm -hmm. a tectonic shift, if you will, in the public uh, to understand that we've got to do something, with, and we need to do it now. Not tomorrow, not a generation from yeah. now, but now. Yeah, and interestingly, when you look at polling, and there's a new CNN poll that suggests that it's it's also young people. I mean, the under 35s are, are feeling extremely motivated uh, to change things. Uh, the older the respondents are in this polling, perhaps the less uh, uh, obvious uh, that that shift is. But you do really, really feel it in the under 35s. You talk about the worldwide movement. I'm here in London. We had some That's huge right. marches in the UK. We even had in Bristol in the United Kingdom the mm -hmm. statue of a man who benefited from the slave trade uh, who, that was toppled and thrown in the harbor. How, I mean, when you see that this movement that was sparked in Minneapolis, that spread across the United States, is now a worldwide movement, wh what goes through what your goes, mind? What goes through my mind is something Martin Luther King uh, said many years ago, 
that we live in a world house. We live in a global village. We are, in fact, connected. So the transatlantic slave trade that brought the forebears of George Floyd to the United States uh, is very much connected to uh, Great Britain, very much connected to Lords of, of London, which ensured the transatlantic slave trade. And so people mm -hmm. understand that mm -hmm. uh, people of color are all around the world and that this is, in fact, a global movement. Some of the challenges that we face in the United States mm -hmm. are also uh, faced uh, in, in London and Britain. And so, yes, this is a global movement. People feel, I mean, I, I, I want to emphasize that, people feel the loss of humanity and they feel like their humanity is being robbed. So, yes, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, Reverend, what we're seeing now are live images coming uh, to us from Houston. This is going to be a big public mourning for George Floyd, his hearse uh, outside of the funeral home. Uh, his uh, funeral will be held tomorrow, but today is a, is a public visitation. Could you share with us your thoughts on, on today, what is happening in Houston? Yes. So, uh, as, a, as well as being a civil rights uh, lawyer, I'm an ordained minister. And one of the things that uh, is done in ministry, uh, funerals, particularly visitations, allow people to see, uh, to visit, uh, if you will, the person that they've lost, and to begin to bring about a sense of closure. So this uh, right of visitation is a way for people to go to the side, if you will, of George Floyd, metaphorically, if not physically, and to glimpse his humanity. You know, someone who was a, uh, a loving father, who was beloved by many, who played football and, and basketball, who, uh, whose life represented the, the, the aspirations and struggles of regular folks. And so this uh, moment of mourning, this moment of grieving, is for his family, for his friends, his community, but because of the tragic circumstances of his death, literally for people around the world. All right, Reverend Cornell Brooks, thanks very much. Uh, uh, the Reverend is the former NAACP president. Thank you for, for joining us.